Hello and welcome to the Geomestic channel. Today's lesson will give a quick overview on what it means for a line to be tangent to a circle. And we'll look at a few different ways to use tangent lines to solve problems. Head down to the description if you'd like a printable guided notes worksheet that follows along with this lesson. So jumping right in, by definition, when a line is tangent to a circle, that means that it intersects the circle in exactly one point. So how does that work? So what we're looking for here is a line that just barely touches the edge of a circle, just like this. Now, tangents can be segments, they can be rays, um, but regardless, if you extend out a segment or array, uh, that segment or ray still has to be um, touching the circle just in one spot. Okay, and that spot right there, this is called the point of tangency. Point of tangency. Okay, so tangent line hits a circle in exactly one spot. That spot is what we call the point of tangency. And the main problem solving tool that we're gonna to utilize today is that a radius drawn to a point of tangency, like so. Okay, a radius drawn to a point of tangency must always be perpendicular to that tangent line. Okay, and this is gonna open up a lot of different types of problems once we introduce that right angle. Think um, right triangles, a lot of things we can do with right triangles and such. Um, and the converse of this is also true. So if a line is perpendicular to a radius at the end point on the circle, then that line has to be tangent to the circle. So we can determine tangency with that right angle as well. Now, another useful tool about tangents is that if you have two tangent lines that meet at a point outside of a circle, so say two tangent lines that meet at a point outside the circle, then those two segments from each point of tangency to the point where they intersect, those two segments are going to be congruent to one another. And this can be proven um, by utilizing right triangles. If I um, were to draw the radius to each point of tangency, knowing that these are right angles, I can kind of draw a line through the middle there. And what I have are two right triangles. I can prove those triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. And I can make those two um, those two legs congruent to one another. So two tangent lines that meet at a point outside the circle, those two segments are going to be congruent. Now let's look at a few different ways we can use tangents to solve problems. First example is gonna look similar to set up there. So we'll say that any lines that appear to be tangent are tangent. So we're looking at this, these two lines right here. Um, let's give an angle of 114 degrees. And let's say that this angle is what we're trying to find. Okay, so in a situation like this, we've got a circle with two tangent lines coming off of the circle. We've got an angle of 114 as a central angle in the circle. And this angle out here what we're looking for here is x. So the first thing we notice is that if we have two tangent lines, we know that the radius drawn to those two tangent lines, you're gonna have right angles in those corners. And once we have those two right angles, what we have is a quadrilateral four-sided um, figure here where we know three of the four angles. We're just missing that fourth angle. So knowing that a quadrilateral total interior angle sum is 360 degrees, we can add up the three angles that we know and whatever is left over is going to be our angle X. So if we take the three angles that we do know, 114, 90, and 90, okay, adding all those together, you end up with 294 degrees. And if I subtract the 294 from 360, you end up with a total of 66 degrees. So this angle right here, X, would have to be a 66 degree angle. Okay, so knowing that these tangent lines produce those 90 degree angles, that's gonna help us out in situations like this. Okay, let's take a look at another one. This next example, uh, I like to call it the 
bicycle chain example or a pulley example. So say we've got two circles and we know the radius for each, say the larger circle has a radius of we'll say eight centimeters, smaller circle has a radius of uh, we'll go five centimeters. What we're gonna do is we're going to draw a tangent line that connects both circles. Okay, so this line is gonna be tangent to both circles. And what I wanna know is I wanna know the distance between the center of these two circles. So this is my distance that I'm looking for. Okay, this is gonna be my X. And let's say that the distance from point of tangency to point of tangency, we're gonna call that, uh, we're gonna call it 15 centimeters. Okay, so there's the setup. Distance between the centers is what I'm after. I've got the radius of each circle. Distance from tangent point to tangent point is 15. Okay, so a couple things that I know. First of all, is that when that tangent line meets the radius at that point of tangency, I've got two right angles up here at the top. Now, anytime we're looking for distances and I've got right angles, chances are we're probably gonna utilize the fact that we can create a right triangle. Okay, so the way we're gonna do that is we're going to um, use X as one of the sides as my triangle, and we're gonna move this 15 centimeter line. We're just gonna kind of shift it down. So if I look at it like this and I just bring it down to where this point here matches down here, and I would slide this down the same distance. So I'm really just sliding this top line down five centimeters to where this point of tangency lines up on the center of that circle. So sliding this thing down, I can kind of move it right here. So these two line segments are going to be congruent because I've just slid it down. This is 15 centimeters. And because this right angle here is going to correspond with this angle here, okay, these are parallel to one another since I just slid it down, these corresponding angles are going to be congruent. So I've got this right angle. So what I've created is I've created this kind of skinny long right triangle right here draw down here so it kind of looks like this here's my right angle this distance the hypotenuse is X okay I got the 15 centimeter length across the top and then last I've got this distance here okay so if I look at what I have the radius here being 8 the radius here being 5 if I translate this over here this distance being five centimeters, since I slid it down five centimeters. What's the difference between those? It's three. So this distance here is gonna be a three centimeter length. So I've got a right triangle. The two legs are three and 15 centimeters. The hypotenuse is X. If you've got a right triangle with two of the three sides, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side. That's what we're gonna do. So Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the two legs, c is the hypotenuse, so x is going to be our c. So I can set it up as 3 squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. Run through that, we got 9, 15 squared is 225, 9 plus 225 is 234. And last step, if I take the square root of 234, you're gonna end up with about 15.3. We'll round to the nearest tenth here, 15.3 centimeters. So again, you square root both sides of there. All right, so the distance between the two centers of those circles, 15.3 centimeters. Okay, so those right triangles open up the fact that we can use different strategies that we've used in right triangles this time Pythagorean theorem is what's going to work for us. Let's do one more example. So this time we've got a circle. We're going to circumscribe a triangle where each side of the triangle is going to be tangent to the circle. Give you some lengths here. We'll say that this distance here 
is 25 inches. Across the bottom, we'll go 29. And we'll say that this distance, okay, so just from here to here, we're gonna call that nine inches. Okay, so the question is, what is the perimeter of the triangle? Perimeter of the triangle is what we're after. Okay, so perimeter of the triangle, we're gonna add up uh, the lengths all the way around. Problem that we have here is that this distance is unknown. So we've got this side, the whole side's 25, the whole side down at the bottom is 29. I've got this piece of nine, but I don't have this piece right here. Okay, so we're gonna go back to that second property that we talked about with tangent lines, is that if you have two tangent lines that meet outside of the circle, then those two segments are congruent. Okay, so if we look at what we have, I've got um, really three sets of this here. So I've got a, t a tangent line here, tangent line here, those two meet at this point outside of the circle. I've got the same thing happening over here where these two segments are gonna be the same. And then up top, a third, these two segments are the same. So we're gonna use this fact to be able to get to this missing piece over here. Where we have to start is up in this corner and we're gonna kind of work our way around until we get to this other side. Okay, so we've got nine inches here. That means that this piece is also gonna be nine inches. Okay, so nine inches here. And since this whole right side is 25 and this piece is nine, all we have to do is subtract nine from 25 to get this distance and 25 minus nine gets you 16. Okay, so this piece is 16. But I know these two pieces are congruent, so I can work this around as being 16. And kind of do the same thing all the way around. This is 29, 16 from 29. If I subtract those, we're left with 13. And these two are congruent, so I've got a missing piece here, which is gonna be 13 inches. Okay, we've got all of our sides now. We can just add up all of our pieces. We got 25 plus 29, plus 13 plus the nine. Add all those together and we're gonna end up with a total perimeter of 76 inches. All right, that's the story on tangent lines to a circle. If this was helpful for you, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Geomestic channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.